Title screen, disability access, tips for the small business. Here are some words guaranteed to provoke strong emotions. The Americans with Disabilities Act. For millions of disabled persons, these words mean access to the workplace, to shopping, and to services. But for some business owners, the Americans with Disabilities Act means fear about expensive lawsuits and remodeling projects if their businesses are not in compliance with regulations. A woman in a wheelchair approaches businesses outside door. A blind woman crosses the street. The ADA has been the law of the land for more than 20 years now, and yet many businesses are still not fully accessible to the disabled. Those business owners are missing a marketing opportunity and making themselves vulnerable to lawsuits. By some measures, one in seven Americans have some form of disability. There are 14 million people in the U.S. who get around with wheelchairs, walkers, guide dogs, or canes. People with disabilities like to frequent businesses that have easy access. In short, providing access means generating more business. Speaker Rachel Stewart is in a wheelchair. A lot of times um, doors are heavy and so I can't open them myself or if they don't have a way to grasp onto the door then I have a difficult time opening the door as well. Um, and a lot of times I'll just either sit outside and wait for somebody to walk by, hopefully it's a busy street, or if it's not, I'll just go and pass up the next and go to the next shop. A woman in a wheelchair and a blind woman navigate a deli and order lunch. But while business owners typically have a lot to say when they've been hit with an ADA lawsuit, here's something we've never heard. My business is in compliance. Fortunately, there are relatively simple and inexpensive steps that you can take to improve accessibility and diminish your risk of being targeted with a lawsuit. Speaker Tom Dubrow is a certified access specialist. Some things cost very little. For example, the door closures can be modified for as little as $100 to bring them into ADA compliance. One crucial first step that you should take is to hire a Certified Access Specialist, or CASP. You have legal protections if you work with a CASP to identify and correct disability access violations. That's thanks to a law that the California Chamber of Commerce and other business groups worked with the Consumer Attorneys of California to pass that took effect in 2009. For the next few minutes, we'll take a look at a few violations that are easily found and easily fixed with the help of a certified access specialist. We'll also get a chance to see how disabled people experience the world to understand why some of the requirements of the ADA that may seem arbitrary actually make a huge difference for the disabled. With their help, we'll show you 10 steps that you can take to make sure that your business is in compliance with the law. If you have a parking lot, the first thing someone can notice just by driving by is whether you have the required signage at each entrance to the parking lot. Not only is the absence of signage a violation, it's also a pretty strong indicator that there has been little effort made to address any architectural barriers in the building. Parking lot signage is very important. You have to have a sign at each entrance to the parking lot indicating that there is disabled parking in there and that uh, if you park in a disabled zone, you, you uh, will get towed away. Another violation that is easily seen from outside the business is improperly marked stalls for disabled parking. There are specific dimensions that need to be used and there are specific signs that are required at each space for disabled parking. A parking lot that is obviously not in compliance sends up a red flag to someone looking for violations that the entire building needs to be checked. For the accessible spaces, for me it's important to have what's called a van accessible space, so meaning the, the cross hatchings are wide enough to be able to allow enough space for me to lower my ramp and then exit the vehicle. Um, and then it's also if it's not properly marked and if it's hard to tell, if there's not a really big sign out, then a lot of times people will just park in them who don't have the disabled placard and then that makes it really difficult for me and I might have to go to a different store if there's no parking for me that will allow me to, to lower the ramp and exit my vehicle. At one time, raised ramps from the parking lot to the walkway were acceptable. That's no longer the case. But if you still have a raised ramp, it's easily seen by someone who knows what to look for. Raised ramps at one time were commonly used, 
they often extended into the access aisle. They cannot extend into the access aisle at all. The access aisle must be flat within 2% measured in any direction for the entire width and length of the access aisle. A woman in a wheelchair approaches a building entrance that is inaccessible. A CASP points out a building entrance that violates ADA regulations. You're not required to have a level area at the entrance to your building, but there can't be a step more than half an inch high. Any higher and it will be a barrier to wheelchairs. I won't even be able to get up over that step. Even though it is a power wheelchair, I have a bolt that sticks down that will prevent me from being able to get into the business if the, if the um, step up is more than a half an inch. Um, and I've gotten stuck quite a few times of not being able to get into restaurants or businesses if the step up is, is over a half an inch. Any entrance to your building from the outside that has a door that opens out is required to have enough maneuvering room for someone in a wheelchair to be able to use it. Even if the door is light enough for me to open and it has a handle that I can grab onto, if there's not enough room on either side of the door for me to be able to back up and keep pulling the door open and then you know, be able to enter the, the door, um, then I can't get in still. So it's also important to have enough room on either side of the door to be able to maneuver. If the entrance to your building is not at the same level as the parking lot and you have only stairs to reach the building, that's a sure sign of non-compliance. You need a ramp that meets the requirements for width, length, maximum slope, and handrails. A person approaching a building where there's only stairs to gain entrance is obviously barred from, from entering that building. Ramps would be required under those circumstances to uh, provide a way to for a person in a, in a wheelchair to gain access to the entrance of the building. This may seem obvious, but still, not all buildings are in compliance. Doors have to be wide enough for a wheelchair to get through. The minimum width is 32 inches. Just recently I had the experience where I went to a place to go get my computer repaired and there wasn't a whole lot of computer repair places around and so I did find this one place and the door was just slightly too narrow for me to even be able to squeeze my wheelchair in. So um, I, could, I actually, the store owner came and met me outside um, to be able to do the business outside but it was just really a a weird, frustrating, kind of embarrassing situation of here I am outside their business. People in wheelchairs must conduct business while seated, of course, so you're required to have counter space available that is low enough to be accessible. Usually that requires a contractor to come in, a carpenter, and actually remove a small section of the counter and lower it. That can run anywhere from $500 to $1,000. However, consider that a person using a wheelchair for mobility really needs that access space in order to deal face to face with the person on the other side. A CASP shows areas of a restroom where proper measurements are required. Restrooms have a list of specific requirements that must be met to accommodate the needs of people with a range of disabilities. Of course, there needs to be a stall with enough space for a wheelchair, but there are also requirements regarding the placements of toilet flush controls, paper dispensers, mirrors, and grab bars. If you're able-bodied, some of these requirements will seem nitpicky, but they make a world of difference to someone who has a disability. I think a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of different variation in how high a toilet is. And from, I, I need a toilet that's a lot higher that can make it a lot easier for me to transfer onto. Um, and if it's not high enough, a lot of times I can't use it at all. So that's really frustrating. Um, and I find that I encounter very low toilets quite a lot. And the other thing is, a lot of times, even if I am able to make it onto the toilet, the um, paper dispenser is way too high for me to reach it, or way too far away for me to reach it, um, which is just embarrassing. Rounding out our top 10 list of compliance issues, all doors must have a kick plate on the bottom of the push side of the door. Adding kick plates is actually very inexpensive. It can be as little as $25 to $50. A woman in a wheelchair approaches a business entrance that is inaccessible and rolls away. A blind woman crosses the street. There are compelling reasons to bring your business in compliance with ADA requirements. It'll prevent lawsuits, sure, but it's also good for business beyond being good for your disabled customers. People with disabilities have able-bodied friends and family members, and they go out together to shop or eat or take care of business. Those able-bodied customers have money to spend too, 
And if your business won't accommodate the disabled member of their party, they'll find one that will. Speaker Shannon Ramsey is blind. You know, people with disabilities, we, we really do have a lot to contribute and we do want to be part of the community and we are consumers too and I think that we should try to find ways to work together to increase access. Being able to help to eliminate these obstacles can make a really big difference for improving the quality of life of people with disabilities and also helping business owners in getting more business into their stores. I work, I have a full-time job, I have money to spend at different shops and restaurants and for me if it's inaccessible I'm not going to go there. So be a good host to the elderly grandparents and veterans injured in action and persons living with disabilities for whatever reason. Contact a CASP today and make sure you're open to business, to everyone. To find out more about what a certified access specialist does and how to find one to inspect your business, go to findacasp.com. That's where you'll find a link to the California Department of General Services website that has all of the information you need. Once a CASP has certified your business, you have special legal rights that will help you with an accessibility lawsuit. With certification, you can ask the court to put a 90-day hold on the suit and also request an early evaluation conference with a court officer who has special training on ADA issues. A CASP can also help you put together a plan to make any changes you need to make for ADA compliance. For more information on the California Commission on Disability Access, go to www.ccda.ca.gov. This video is a public service of the California Chamber of Commerce, the California Restaurant Association, Disability Rights California, the California Business Properties Association, the Center for Independent Living, the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the Consumer Attorneys of California. Title screen. This video and all links are offered to the public for information purposes only and are not legal advice.